So we're gonna talk about the yield champions. And basically what I explain to people is that about half of all the NCGA national yield winners on an annual basis are customers of ours. Some of them use the entire system, and Justin will talk to you about the system versus using selected products. But we, for that reason, a lot of people have called us the company of champions. And so that's where we came up with the yield champions logo. And basically what we, when we talk about Conklin AgroVantage products, or yield champion products, we're talking about an umbrella that is consists of three different subgroupings of products. We have a full line of wetting agents, compatibility agents, pH control agents, drip retardants, anything you can put with herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides to make them more effective. And that, that the WEX is the oldest product in that line, but we have several other products there as well. Our biological products, we have seed treatments, forage treatments, we have uh, plant growth regulators, uh, several products in that category. And the third group I talk about is our fertilizer products. We have some of the highest quality fertilizers that are really designed for two purposes. In the furrow with the seed at the time of planting, they're very pure uh, products. They're made with food grade materials, they're neutral pH, low salt index, uh, but they're also used in a lot of foliar applications. We've got a full line of micronutrients, and then we've got a product called Guardian, which you mix with liquid nitrogen to basically eliminate leaching and denitrification of that nitrogen, so you hold on to it. So I'm gonna talk just a little bit about a handful of our products, and then turn it over to Justin, but the two goals we have in everything that we do in this ag line is to reduce input costs on a per acre and per bushel basis, at, while at the same time increasing yields. And so it's really, it's a matter of efficiency more than input. Uh, typically, we'll have a lot of guys, they'll say, we've been able to reduce our total input cost 30 to 40% in a lot of cases, dollar-wise, and be able to increase yields at the same time. It's not that they're not spending money, but they're spending money differently, and they're using some of the technologies that are here. Um, there, was a, there was a magazine that came out, you guys probably all get progressive following. This is a really good article that came out several years ago when uh, Dave Hula at the time had set a new world record at 454. You know, that's been blown away two, three times since then. But Dave Hula uh, and several other NCG yield winners were in that magazine, and I started flipping through it. Well, a lot of them I'd done meetings with. Jerry Cox and I have probably done 100 meetings together. He has more wins at the national level than anybody else that's ever been in the competition. <coughs> and I read through that magazine. I'm, I'm sure every one of you guys takes the time, in the winter time especially, to read through every magazine, every article. Right, Robert? Every, I mean, <laughs> you guys, we're all students, right? No, really, probably not. I usually get a stack of magazines on my, ta my table, and when they fall on the floor, my wife figures I'm through with them, so she throws them in the trash. But this one came, and because I knew so many people that were in there, I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna study this. And I did, I read every single article, every single word, and I was trying to answer this question, what do these guys all do in common? And here's what I came up with, seven things. <clears throat> Number one, they all do a complete soil test every year. Now they don't do it on every acre, but certainly on their competition acres. And so soil testing is really, really critical. Second of all, they use, all use seed treatments. Many of them are using our Amplify seed treatment uh, for enhanced germination, not just seed treatments for insecticides and fungicides, things like that, but in, uh, products like Amplify to increase the pop-up on that crop. They all use in-row starters and microbes. Now that's interesting because it's in row, right with the seed, not two by two, not broadcast. And the reason is uh, it's really important for certain nutrients to get really, really close to the seed because they don't, they're just not very mobile in the soil. There's certain rules that you follow, like for instance, boron should never go in furrow, but for, boron's a really, really critical nutrient, uh, but it has to go on some other way. But most of your, a lot of your micronutrients can go right in furrow. Uh, zinc is really critical in furrow uh, early on. It's probably the number one micro to use with corn because zinc is so immobile at cold temperatures. Um, but the other thing is that once you get a setup where you can pop something in furrow, you can go with things like sugars, biologicals, seed treatments, lots of other things can go in there. They all do routine soil testing, and or tissue testing rather, and that's really critical because you put what you think that crop's gonna need based on your soil test in furrow, but then what do you have in the, in the plant? The plant will tell you if there's still deficiencies so that when you're coming over that crop with some herbicide or fungicide or maybe a foliar application, you can spike it with the potential micronutrients that that crop really needs. And that's the only way you're gonna be able to know that is if you do the tissue testing. And because what they're looking for is they're going out there and they're looking at a crop that looks really, really good and they're looking for hidden hunger. 
you know, there's sometimes the crop looks really great, but if it's really, really short on manganese or zinc or boron, uh, that's gonna be really important. Foliar feeding, they all foliar feed one to three times. I know some guys that feed it, foliar feed is, and don't confuse this with fertigation. Fertigation is a great tool, but this is direct foliar feeding. Number six, they all use late nitrogen applications. And the reason for that's pretty simple. Older genetics took about 25% of your nitrogen after tasseling. Modern genetics take 40% and more after tassel. So if you put all your nitrogen on early, and you've had weather conditions, you know, you can, you can lose a lot of your nitrogen and you, everybody knows what a crop looks like when it runs out of nitrogen. Uh, and you don't fill like you should. And number seven, this is probably the most significant. They're always learning. All these guys uh, that I, I knew from the magazine, that, that particular article, would come to the Pro Ag One program that Conklin has and other programs I've seen about all the time. In fact, Jerry Cox, uh, I asked, I was in a meeting with him one day in Missouri and we were tearing down after the meeting, putting the display away, and one of the guys that was there was a, happened to be a Beck seed dealer, and he asked Jerry, he says, how many times have you been to Pro Ag 1? And Jerry says, let me think. He says, at least three dozen times. Now, at the time, he'd been with us 12 years. He'd been working with us 12 years. That's three times a year. Now, some guys go to a Pro Ag 1 program, and they, they tell me as they leave, they say, you know, I learned more here in two days than I ever have, you know, in a, in a year of college. And I always remind him, well, when you're in college, you probably had a lot of other things on your mind, too. But, but the, bat, the fact of the matter is, they go once, and they think, I've got it. I've, I've been there, you know. But Jerry Cox goes back year after year, and he, he says, every time, I change a little bit of something. So each of these, I think, is a really important part of what we call the agrovantage system. So we start out with the soil analysis. Conklin works with Midwest Labs. We get you an analysis that shows you what's in the soil. But more importantly, the next page is, we give you a specific prescription. We know what the raw materials are. We know what the availability is on our products, our microbes, and so forth. And this, this recommendation is specifically based on our raw materials. Then down here, we have additional fertility requirements. These are things like, you're gonna need some additional nitrogen, or you're gonna need some maybe some broadcast fertilizer. And those will be listed down here. So these are more generic recommendations. Kip Colors has had the world record for soybeans three times. I, I talk to Kip often, and Kip has four products. In fact, uh, some of you guys might know Chad Briggs, but Chad was down in a meeting that we had down in uh, uh, Missouri one day, and Kip was, happened to be there, he and I were talking, and Chad walks up and I said, Chad, you need to meet Kip. And Kip at the time had the world record at I think 160 bushel an acre soybean yields. Chad, I knew the next year, this has been like three years ago, he was gonna be planting his first circle of soybeans. And um, so I told, I told Kip, I said, you know, Chad's raised a lot of beans, but he's raised pintos and garbanzos and kidneys and things like that. But he's gonna raise soybeans for the first time. It was, a, it was like a, it was a big circle. It was like a 240 acre circle. And uh, so I said, tell him what he needs. And Kip says, well, there's four products that I use on every acre of my 23,000 acre farm. And they are number one, Wex. I'll talk a little bit about that, Amplify. MicroMaster are, are manganese, and manganese is really critical. I'll talk to you about that. And then a new product, he, he calls it, he says, my super juice. Well, super juice is what we call Kip Keller's Nutrient Compass fer uh, Foliar Fertilizer. But those are four products he uses on every acre, no matter what the crop. And here's what I put down here. Those four products, you can spend less than 25 bucks an acre retail and, and see an extra 10 to 20 bushels. So I think it's the best example, kind of in a small picture, of what we can show guys how to do. Wex, we put on one quart per acre, pre-plant or pre-merge. Uh, you don't wanna put it on a growing crop at that rate, because it'll make whatever your else it is you're going over with way too hot. But pre-plant, pre-merge, uh, if you're doing a burn down, pre-plant application of herbicide, that's the perfect place to put on a quart. We've tested it all the way up to two gallons an acre. You don't see any benefit going over a quart. So a quart per acre uh, is the benefit there. Wex is, uh, and Amplify is our seed treatment. Amplify was developed at the University of Arizona. It is a seed treatment that covers the seed. It's what I call seed germination insurance. It comes in two forms. It comes in a dry form. We take this powder, we mix it up with a gallon, gallon and a half of water, put it through a liquid seed treater, and that'll treat uh, 1,500 pounds of corn seed. Uh, you can use it on any crop other than soybeans. It doesn't work the same on soybeans. Amplify D is a talc carrier. 
you'd put an ounce and a half, typically, they say on this jar, it'll say two ounces, I tell you start with an ounce and a half. The only thing you can really screw up is if you overuse the amplifier and you got excess floating to the bottom of your seed box, that's not gonna do you any good. But an ounce and a half, it's basically, it can replace an equal amount of talc. So it's a, it's a talc carrier. You can put it through, uh, if you've got a talc inductor on a, mm -hmm. on a, uh, a seed tender, that's a place you can put that. But you're talking about a product that basically surrounds a seed. What is in every seed is energy, an energy source, and that energy source is adenosine monophosphate. Well, adenosine monophosphate changes to diphosphate and then to triphosphate in what's called the Krebs cycle. And I thought, when I first heard that, I thought, I think I heard about that in chemistry or biology or something, but it's, it is really the cycle of life. All of your cells in your body and mine and in that corn plant needs energy in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So what happens is you've got that in the seed. Every seed that, that is, it's, if it's a good germ seed, it'll have adenosine monophosphate in it. What we've done is we've coated that seed with an additional source of that energy. So as it swells, draws in moisture, it also draws in an additional source. We've doubled or tripled the amount of energy. Doesn't change the genetics of your crop or anything else, but it gives you more energy to pop up. Here's, a, here's kind of an interesting insight that we found. The smaller the seed, the more dramatic the results. You try some of this on Milo. Of course, with your seeding rate, I mean, your cost is ridiculously low. It's, I mean, it's way less than a buck an acre. Um, with corn, it runs, depending on how you buy it, three to four dollars an acre would be on the high end. Uh, but basically, we'll see a seven to eight bushel yield response average year in and year out on corn. I've seen as low as two or three. I've seen as high as 12, 15. Um, this is a company uh, from back east further. They, they work more in Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, it's called Beck Seed Company. And they do a program called PFR research, practical farm research. They do large plots in multi-states, uh, multi-farm, and if they try a product and they see positive results over a three to four year period, they put their stamp of approval on it. Out of 150 products they've tested to date, I've, I've been told they only have 15 that have been proven. We've got, I think, five of those. WEX is one, they show on corn an average of over all their testing on corn of $6.11 per acre added net profit. Now here's the kicker, that's all based on full retail price is what they figure the input cost at. Uh, on soybeans they figure $14 an acre, on corn on Amplify they're showing $13.56. Uh, I won't go through all this detail, but Dr. Huber at Purdue University found that when you put uh, Roundup, chemicals on a soybean crop and you get a little overlap you know you see that yellow flash they were trying to figure out what is that well what it is is that plant has an inability to uptake enough manganese micronutrient and it stunts the plant it basically it provides a yield drag so what they found was the reason for that is because of the lack of manganese at that particular time so what they found is if you spike your roundup combination with some manganese it offsets the problem. Kip Colors calls this the lowest hanging fruit. It's the easiest thing to do, the lowest cost, to get the highest bang for your buck. These are uh, plots from over in Indiana, Illinois, but you see they're decent soybeans to start with, 44 to 65 bushel beans, but where they use uh, the uh, uh, manganese at one pint in the, in the tank mix, they got an extra 7.4 bushel. Now I tell people, forget about seven bushel. Think about two. If you get two bushel of soybeans at eight dollars, that's sixteen dollar return on a four dollar spin. That you're already going over the field. So that's why Kip calls it a low hanging fruit. That this is a product that what we've found over the years, you know, more and more people are moving away from glyphosate. Well, but if you've been using glyphosate for years, what you'll see if you lay out your soil tests year after year, uh, Justin may talk about this. You'll see most of our soils are deficient in. So we really, in most cases, we'll put some in furrow, especially on beans, and then we'll also put it in our in any kind of glyphosate mix, whether it's corn, beans, anything else. The fourth product is Kip Colors Nutrient Compass. It's a product he developed in, in South America. He brought it in the United States. We have the exclusives to it. He put in one quart, and it was really designed to piggyback with glyphosates, because that's what they were using down there. And uh, one quart of that product will give you a larger leaf surface. It just helps you get larger expressions of foliage of that plant. Um, here's a test, probably the best single test we've ever had in Nebraska, at least on this product. It was done by a, an independent 
uh, agronomy group in central Nebraska. It was done in 2014. They did it on 32 hybrids, three replications each. They got an average of a two to 27 bushel per acre increase on one quart of cut, uh, skip pellet nutrient company supply to V5 with their glyphosate. And the average over all those 32 hybrids was 12 bushel average increase. Sintos is a newer product, came out just in 2018. For years, our NCGA guys have all said, well, we use sugar in furrow because <coughs> it stimulates microbial activity, and especially in soybeans, you get better nodulation and everything else. Uh, so we finally came out with an ag sugar. It comes in totes, mini totes, and uh, five gallon containers. You put a pint in furrow to two pints, and uh, basically the cost is really reasonable. If you buy it in any kind of quantity, you're gonna get down to a pint of, you know, somewhere between a buck, buck and a quarter. Uh, but here's the testing that was done by Bex. They tested several different sugar, ag sugars. The highest payback return on investment was on one pint of Barcintos added to the starter fertilizer in furrow. They got an epic $9.87 return per acre on a product that costs less than $2. So it's, uh, and that's, they, they figured it at retail. Uh, they weren't figuring those out. The Intensify is a brand new product. This product is a, uh, comes in a container like this. It's a, it's a granular, but it's a plant growth regulator. And Kip developed this. And it's a product that he, he explains it to me this way. He says it's twice as, it's three times as concentrated as any other plant growth regulator available in the marketplace to a farmer in, in America today at half the cost. And that's a retail. Uh, and, and so if you're, if you're a farmer, we normally work with farmers buy and direct in large quantities, but this is a product you can add in a foliar application or you can put it in furrow, either way. Um, and how you use it is, is just mix it in and it, it mixes with anything, fertilizer, uh, ag, uh, any type of uh, spray application you're putting down. I wanna show you this little short, it's a less than two minute video, but Kip explains exactly what the product does here. a lot of plant growth regulators out there already and you're probably already using one. A lot of products out there just does one thing. Ours intensifies the growth. The two plant growth regulators we have is GA3 and IBA. IBA is for the root development, GA3 is for the above ground. So what that does is it gets that plant up out of the ground at a lot faster pace, developing more roots. That's the key to the whole deal is getting those roots down there, as many roots as possible, because that's the factory to the plant. That's what you got to feed that plant with. So the more nutrients you can extract out of the ground, the more that plant's got the ability to yield. You know, with Intensify, you should be able to see the results immediately. You'll know it's working. I try to make everything farmer friendly. The beauty part about this is you just dump it in your fertilizer tank when there's very little agitation, you're ready to go. This stuff is easy, simple, ready to use. The benefit of this is my 25 plus years researching on my farm. We research every year. So you're getting that advantage. You don't have to go out there and do this yourself. This is a piggyback to all other Conklin products. So if you're using Amplified D or Amplified L, this goes right on top of it. This is an add-on product. Conklin being in business for 50 years, and farmer owned, I mean, they have a long history in agriculture. If you want to see more of your crops, get them up to a fast start, growing, make more yield, become a champion, I recommend getting over to your local Conklin distributor and getting some and trying it on your farm and see if it works for you. Okay. Uh, Justin Dahlgren, we're going to have him come up and I'm going to have Rich McPhillips introduce him. Rich works with Cal, his, uh, Justin's dad, and with their operation out there and has for some, several years. So, Rich, come on up and introduce Justin and I'll leave okay. the clicker here for you, Justin. <coughs> Thanks, Denny. Thank you. Uh, again, my name is Rich McPhillips. I'm from Columbus, Nebraska. I grew up where uh, many of you run a zematic pivot. I grew up in Lindsay. I got three brothers that farm up in that area. Yeah actually the original homestead of my great-grandfather from back in the late 1860s so I have been uh, agriculture has always been a part of my life I love it and um, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of stuff tonight because I know I don't want to keep you guys from the steak that's coming out here in a few minutes so we'll, we'll make sure of that um, but I started working with Justin's dad Cal I think it's six years ago maybe 2014 2014 and um, <clears throat> 
when I first met Cal was at the National Corn Growers down in San Antonio, Texas, and uh, Cal, I, I, I started working with him actually probably a dozen years ago. It took me a lot of years to get to your dad to where he'd actually listen to me, and I finally twisted his arm to go to a program in Hastings that Todd Hoffman uh, did, uh, along with, uh, we had Kip Cullers in and we had Jerry Cox, and uh, your dad took one thing home from that meeting, and it was the man eating issue. And uh, I won't take a lot of uh, Justin's story, but he went home and because of DEQ and their feed yard there, he uh, went through and went back as much as 10 years on some of them. And he found out his manganese levels because of glyphosate had gone down 30 to 60% available manganese in the soil. They are a big purchaser of manganese now. They've seen some really neat things there along with all of our trace elements. Um, but Cal, uh, even though he was tough to get into, He's very fair on testing stuff. And as the few years that he tested after about the third or fourth year, he, I met him in Kearney for lunch one day, and he says, by the way, we're using your entire program from now on. And he told me, he says, basically, your cut, our input cost over 30 bucks an acre, and we increased our yields on average uh, around 25 bushel, but I'm gonna give you about 15 of those bushels uh, there on, on that. So he says that's a $75, $80 swing with uh, three and a half, four dollar corn. But uh, with that, like I said, I'm not gonna get real detailed on stuff here tonight because I got the guy that's doing it every day, Justin Dahlgren, and, and as he shares stuff with you, you're gonna say, I agree with that. You might say, I disagree with what Justin's doing. What we wanna do is share information tonight and let you guys understand there's ways that we can help the farmer out there. And when I can, when when uh, when I first started talking to your dad, you guys were farming about 5,000 acres. Now you're up around 8,000 plus. They run an 8,000 head feed yard. They make sure things work for them. And Justin, I'm going to let you share your story. And then it's his story, guys. It's his story. Listen to what he's going to be talking about. Again, I'm not. We're not expecting you to maybe grab everything that he's doing. But I think the faster. And I know you'll talk about this, the faster you get on the system, yep. the better it's gonna be for your operation. Because you guys didn't jump whole hog the first year or two or three. But once you guys did, you guys have really uh, just done a fantastic job. Yep. Here, uh, let's welcome Justin Dahlgren here, guys. Well, thanks, I'm glad to be here. Uh, a few housekeeping rules, I am open book. If you have a question, feel free to stop and ask me at any moment. I'm not a professional speaker, okay? And these slides are here for me, not for you, so they're not very great, and I apologize. Um, like I said, I've been in the Conklin Company since 2014. Um, my dad was actually going to start, I was still in college. I didn't have much of a part in us starting. I probably do 95 to 100% of it now. When I asked Dad, I said I was going to be giving a little speech today, I said, what do you think I should include in the speech? And my dad's a man of very few words. He said, it works. That's it. That's my speech. It's done. And I have to believe it's true. Um, like I said, we have an 8,000 head farm, 8,000 8, acre farm, uh, 8,000 feed lot, feed lot, and we uh, run about 3,000 yearlings on grass every year. To uh, set the stage here, I want to talk about something. Uh, Business is really simple in my opinion, and there's only three ways you can improve a business. You can make more product, make that product for less, or sell your product for more money. Now we're farmers, we raise yellow two number corn. You don't get to pick your price, that's awesome for you guys, you don't have to focus on two of them. That's what I'm gonna focus most of my talk today is on lowering our cost production and increasing yield. Okay, but with that said, there's not one product sold today for agriculture that will change your farm economically. There's not one. There's a product that will add $50 in yield to your farm. It's gonna cost $49.85 in about two years, okay? Or price of corn is gonna go up or go down to equate about 50 bucks an acre. That being said, a system can change your farm dramatically forever. I'll get into some of our results down the road here and and it, it's really true, Conklin has a system approach that will increase yields and decrease costs over time. And it's not only the system that will work for you this year, 
There's people that have done it for 10, 15, 20 years, and it gets better. It builds. You'll continue to lower your costs and continue to increase yields. I will say, though, that um, some products are really good. I'm not going to talk a lot about them today. There's guys in this room that can talk way better than I can. I will swear by Amplify. It goes on every acre except soybeans all the time. This is a picture of a cover crop for us side by side, one with Amplify, one without. That's probably a half rate of Amplify D because I'm not very good at math some days. Um, and it's just a home run. If you're going across the field with any type of seed, Amplify for a buck, two bucks an acre is something you can't live without. Um, I will say though, while no product can economically change your farm, Conklin has some products that might, from a holistic sense, actually change your life. Guys, if you are in an environment where you have to split apply nitrogen because you can't hold on to it, products like Guardian might allow you to skip that split application. Trust me, it's probably better to split apply your nitrogen, get the wide drop out of the culture machine, or fertigate, that's our preferred method of choice. But um, adding Guardian to the system, might actually make it to where you can go to the lake one more weekend. For some of us, that's probably worth it. Um, this is some of our products that we use. Uh, I should just say we use them all, all the time. Uh, we use a ton of micronutrients, and Conklin needs to get tanker loads cheaper because I could use tanker load of every micronutrient every year. Um, we have a feedlot. We use a lot of manure. We can't get rid of it. Um, there's a saying, don't be a moron. Don't put more manure on. We put more manure on. We can't get rid of it. The going rate in Phelps County, Nebraska right now is we will haul it 10 miles to your field for free. We put it on. Okay, so now that causes problems. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, we use everything. We're heavy, heavy into foliar feeding. When you've got excess nutrients in the soil that are tying up micros, you can only put so much in the soil without it getting tied up. Foliar feeding gives us an opportunity to actually address those needs throughout the season over the course of the year. Um, we primarily grow corn and soybeans. Uh, I used to say I don't want to talk about soybeans because they were our redheaded stepchild. I think I can now. Um, our soybean yields have gone up. I'm pretty heavily confident that if I don't grow 80 bushel soybeans underneath the pivot, I failed somewhere or we had a hail event. Um, and let me tell you, if you're looking right now and you're looking at toss up acres, I will make the case that beans will out economically yield or out economically profit your corn. And if you got any questions about that, I'll help build a system to do it. Okay, so how's it changed our bottom line? Well, from 2014, I'm going to call that my base year because we've dabbled in products just enough to make sure these guys weren't full of crap. Um, <laughs> We started in 2014, our, our uh, highest yield ever in 2014 was 245 bushel an acre. Um, in 2019, we did 266 bushel an acre. This year, we did 263 across every single irrigated acre. That's the whole farm. Average, that'd be over 5,000 acres. Um, so we've increased our yield significantly. We've lowered our nitrogen usage rate to about 0.72 pounds of nitrogen per bushel. That's pretty constant for us. Um, I don't want to hit too much on that. That's kind of a hidden sales tactic. In my opinion, nitrogen is cheap, um, but we definitely don't want to be putting one, 1 1.2 pounds of nitrogen per bushel. We're going to burn carbon. That's going to hurt us. That's going to hurt our kids more. It's going to hurt us, but it's going to hurt us. Um, we've lowered our cost of production. Uh, I can't give you the best stats on cost of production because um, we weren't very good at keeping track of that before I got home from college. But I can tell you what we've done since I've gone there. Um, we've dropped our cost production down. This last year we were about uh, $583 an acre of variable cost. And that's everything but land. So um, at 263 bushel corn and $4 cash price, we're, we're hitting home runs. There are not very many people doing that. And, and this is a chart of our three year average corn. We've got to take out the hail and the, the crappy storm years that insurance paid us. And you can say, once we started Conklin, it's been nothing but up. I've been starting to track our under pivot yield. I think that's something that everyone should do, separate it out, fix for the dry land areas and the other stuff. This year, we're going to be over 275 bushel an acre for every acre under pivot. That's pretty, 
pretty impressive in my opinion. So what's Conklin done to change our farm? It increased our yields, lowered our cost of bushel. It's made us significantly more competitive in the, man, in the land market. I know for a fact the reason our farm has grown is because I can pay more cash rent and I know it. And still be economically positive. We've balanced our fertility. Folks, if more was better of just the bulk nutrients, there's people out here that should be growing 500 bushel corn. It's not the case. More manure is not better. If that was the case, I would be putting on a lot of nitrogen growing for and bushel corn. It's just not the case. Um, you gotta have your micronutrients right. The more P, the more K, the more tied up your manganese, zinc, and every other micronutrient is. The other thing we've done is we've reduced risk. Um, Conklin showed us that we don't have to put everything up front. Um, if I catch a hailstorm on June 5th, I can abort mission and really change things by spreading out our nitrogen costs, not throwing near as much money at that plant up front. It's allowed us to actually save about 20, 30 bucks on insurance costs because I know that I can change plans in a heartbeat and not be out my entire production costs. So Conklin's not only helped us economically just corn and soybeans. It's actually opened up some new opportunities. Um, as we get better agronomics and better balance our soil, we've actually been able to look at some different crops. Um, I'm actually looking seriously at irrigated wheat, especially on for a chopping system, and put that in, into the feedlot and the feeding system. Um, but I can actually make a case for irrigated wheat or cover crop season. Um, hay crops, we are producing significant words, or we haven't started it, but we are gonna start doing hay. Um, we're looking at exporting nutrients off our farm. Hay is an opportunity to do that. Peas, as I said, we have a, um, we background quite a few cattle on grass. Um, I know there's some people who's in the background quite a few more, but we background 3,000 head and we found that uh, supplementing those cattle uh, protein supplement is a home run where we get cheap distillers. Um, peas actually economically look really similar to, to dry distillers grain. If we can economically produce it, we're going to, and that's another product for our operation to grow. Um, and then cover crops, uh, grazing cover crops is going to be a rotation of ours here shortly. Under pivot, $300 an acre cash rent, ground, no question asked. It will be a part of our rotation. You just got to have five wire fence around the field because your neighbor's not going to be very happy if your yearlings bust through the electric fence and get into his corn crop. Um, we've extended our maturity selection opportunities. This year we did 98 day corn for silage. We wanted to be the first one to get the custom crews in it. Did 98 day corn, did 29.4 ton an acre, and we harvested it on August 21st. That's an opportunity. Every custom crew in the world is busy the day after Labor Day. Yeah, Labor Day. I was cut. That's an opportunity that's huge. 16 inch corn, that's something we're looking at. Um, I don't know if any of you guys really study the regenerative agriculture movement, different things. 16 inch row of corn is something that can be is basically skipping every other row, planting cover crop in between it, looking to build your soil health, uh, plant some legume cover crops to try and help increase nitrogen, add a grazing opportunity after the season. I think it could actually really reduce our cost production, reduce our risk, and up the option. And, and up our total profitability. The problem with it is, is, if you don't have a high level of management, your corn will not succeed. So, but I think we can do it because we've got high fertility ground and I have a willingness to manage it pretty heavily. Um, relay beans, I don't know if anybody follows Jason Mock on Facebook or anybody who's planting wheat and beans in the same field, harvesting, the, you know, so you got wheat growing in like say a 60 inch row, you plant beans in between it, harvest the wheat, let the beans fill out and grow, you can get two crops in one year, grow at the same time. In a high fertility field, it helps kind of manage your, your moisture and helps get the biology stimulated in the soil. Don't know if that one's gonna work for us so much, but something I wanna try. This one's real interesting. Conklin can't help us much with uh, bale grazing. I've got an excess of nutrients. A huge, huge excess of nutrients in my soil. We are actively now starting to bale cover crops after soybeans and silage. We're gonna grow a cover crop. We're gonna bale that cover crop 
we're going to take that out to pasture and we're going to bale graze. Now, bale grazing, for those of you who don't know, is basically setting bales out in a pasture in a field in basically a checkerboard like set section. People who came up with it are actually people up north didn't want to start a tractor in the wintertime, feeding their cows. Okay, build an electric fence between them, let the cows into the next set of bales every single day, you don't have to start a tractor. What they didn't know when they started this is that it was actually the most brilliant way to fertilize a field. Okay, you're actually exporting nutrients and having them put it on the field rather than feeding them in a lot and hauling them around. Well, we're actively doing it for the simple fact that if we can break even, get those nutrients off my farm where I spread too much manure and out to my pasture, I'm going to economically win. We'll probably end up selling that pasture after you do it right, we'll start the process all over again. So that's what we're doing. I think that can also add a lot of opportunity in our rotation. Uh, soybean, cover crop, corn, really economical, three crops, two years. Um, as we start getting near the end of my presentation, uh, I have some undeniable truths. Um, some are with Conklin, some without. Um, you can't starve a profit into a cow. It, it's not possible. Anyone in the cow cap has probably tried it once. They almost went broke doing it. Same goes with farming. You can't cut every, every nutrient. If you are, you better start selling or generating and naming your price. Okay, sell direct to consumer. If you're not gonna do it, you can't start a profit. Be willing to spend a little bit of money. It can decrease your cost over time. But that being said, the easiest cost to cut in any cost production is always the largest one. And the largest one's always land. Look at how can you change our rotation. How can we get more solar energy captured from every acre every year? Soil testing is like a compass. Tissue testing is a GPS. And then balance beats quantity every time. Start off with that. Soil testing is something Conklin talks significantly about, and I love soil testing. It gets you pointed in the right direction, but it is not the be all end all. Tissue testing is. Just because you have enough nutrients in a soil does not mean it's getting into the plant. Folks, I put on a ton of manganese and a ton of zinc, and I still don't get enough into the plant. Every single tissue test I have says I get enough zinc into my soil. Or I have enough in my soil, and every single tissue test I have after V7 says I don't have enough to get into the plant. And I know that's economical. Tissue testing also can be hugely, hugely effective in learning where to grow. I have not found a tissue test level of boron that is too high to limit yield. Where do I have an economic level? I've gotten some up to 25 parts per million. We did 323 bushel corn this year in the NCGA contest on that one. I clearly haven't put it high enough yet. I haven't killed it. That's my fault. I should kill something every year trying to push the limits, okay? Balance beats quantity every time. This is a picture of corn I had in 2019. We were trying to push some yields here. We're putting, uh, really getting to dabble into strip tilling. Um, that was the first year we actually, excuse me. Excuse me. That was the first year we uh, really started pushing uh, nitrogen with our strip till rate. Naturally, we don't put on any P and K. Um, and dry broadcast system, but banding nitrogen sound like a great way to work. We put a lot of nitrogen on our corn on corn ground, somewhere close to 175 pounds an acre, which we can get away with that with the 17 CEC soil. Problem is, at V10 to V12, when our corn was racing in a cold year, our, our potassium wasn't available in the soil. Potassium, for those of you who don't know, needs to be upwards of 65 to 70 degree soil temp before it becomes plant available. What that did is it created an imbalance of fertility in the soil. I had a lot of available nitrogen and very little available potassium. They go in one for one, right? It's just a pool, no matter what, equal balance of what's available. Well, when you get a, your parts per million of nitrogen over 6% in the, you get 6% nitrogen in the plant and less than two potassium, and you catch a windstorm, your corn looks like that. I could have avoided every single bit of that problem by dropping 75 pounds of nitrogen my strip till. I was trying to push yield and it actually hurt me. I could have also fixed that by adding some potassium to look at potassium a little bit. We got a product called Sidekick to help do that. But 
balance beats quantity every time. Okay, always, 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 without question, plant your beans before your corn. Beans can take one hell of a beat. Your corn is a little wimp. Okay? We've been doing this now for quite a few years, and if I could sell my 30 intro planters and have all 15 intro planters, I would. So I could plant every acre of beans first, and then plant corn. No questions. I kind of mentioned this earlier, temperature affects nutrient availability more than quantity. Okay? I've got some soils that have a thousand parts per million potassium. I've got one field that has a 16% pH saturation potassium. For those of you who don't know, that's stupid high. That's a problem. I can be potassium deficient if I don't use the proper starter fertilizer. That's why I feel that anyone using 1034 is leaving money on the table every year, every time. Okay? Potassium is so crucial to nutrient uptake. It is actually more important than phosphorus in early season growth. It'll take up twice as much potassium in the first 40 days of its life than it will phosphorus. Any starter fertilizer that isn't complete and has potassium means you're probably leaving money on the table. That's not to mention the fact that 1034O is really high salt content and probably costing you a lot of money by burning the crap out of your seeds and reducing stand. I'll actually make a challenge to any person out here who is using 1034O to cut that back, eliminate 1034O, put in our starter fertilizer and reduce your seed cost to meet break even cost. We're talking apples to apples. And I'll bet our starter fertilizer on lunch. Every time. I've done it, I've proven it. I won't do it again. 1034 sucks. Okay? Another undeniable truth. The people who can fail on the smallest scale the most often will make the most improvement. I want you to think about that. If you are going to grow and get better, you must try new things. If you can try something on five, ten acres, replicate a trial and do lots of them every single year, you will find out what works faster than anybody else. Okay? If you have to do an 80 acre test track, which we used to, you get to try three things a year. Only three products, either you're gonna be very right or you're not gonna learn anything. I think the people who will actually be one of the best farmers in this country, at least agronomically speaking, are the ones who figure out how to do one acre replicated trials five times, set it up, where you can do multiple ones a year. Next one, we'll never get the correct answer unless we ask the right question. For us, it's very simple. We used to ask ourselves, how, what can we do, which one's right? Okay? What can we do as a farmer? Then once we got our pool of options, what's the best answer? That is totally wrong. We need to ask ourselves, what should we do how do we make it happen? Once we started switching that, we started making economic gains that we can't measure anywhere else. Okay? If you get one thing tonight, I hope it's that one. I really do. Okay, you don't have to do, okay. You don't have to do it all, but you must leverage other people's intelligence and, intelligence and abilities. The big one for that, you don't have to be an agronomist and be a special agronomist to farm. If you're a great farmer, if you're great at managing employees, marketing grain, maintaining equipment, you can be a great farmer. But please, hire someone who is great at agronomy. You can't get away from it. The people who are the best farmers always, always, always leverage other people's abilities and talents. That being said, you can't be incompetent when it comes to agronomy. You have to have a fundamental basis of knowledge of it. Um, study, study some, learn from somewhere, because otherwise you're going to get taken advantage of. Some of the last ones, successful farmers and ranchers spend more time working on their business than in it. I think that's huge. Um, most of us get too busy putting out fires to actually work on our business. The last one is, if it doesn't make holistic sense, it will never make economic sense. Um, it might make sense for somebody to split apply nitrogen five times. I do, and I have 17 CEC soil. But I've built the system with the feedlot and the employee base that I can do it. 
If you're a one-man band trying to cover 2,000 acres of farm ground, split applying a bunch of nitrogen is gonna be a hell of a headache. Okay, especially if you do it five times. That's unsustainable if it affects your home life. Don't make any changes that will have repercussions in your personal lives. Constant learning and improvement. This is one you can take a slide, picture of if you want. Um, I think everyone should be constantly, constantly learning. That was one of the things Dennis talked about. Books that are hugely important, hands-on agronomy, Neil Kinsey. He's gonna talk about dry fertilizer. And I have an extreme disdain for it. I think it acidifies our soil and it's not very recoverable. But his nutrient relationships and interactions in the soil, more important than anything. He's right there, okay? If you can take what he teaches you related to your farm and figure out with our program how to impact it, you'll see huge, huge results, okay? One thing with that though, nutrient relationships. Everyone get a molders chart. Make that be your best friend. That shows the interrelationships of crops or nutrients in, in the soil, okay? Just because you have a zinc deficiency doesn't mean you're short on zinc probably because you're high on, on phosphorus. Okay, that's what the molder chart does. Other books though, uh, Dirt to Soil, Gabe Brown. I highly recommend that, The 80-20 Principle and Rich Dad Poor Dad. Uh, they're not all ag books. I have over 100 books on my Audible account. I spend a lot of time in a feed truck or in a tractor, and I never listen to a radio. Um, podcasts, uh, Working Cows Podcast, AgriTalk, you can see them up there. Um, the big one is training and seminars. I think every farmer should spend at least 10 bucks an acre on improving themselves, minimum, without question. For us, that's $80,000. We don't hit that level, but I wish we would. Um, some of the big ones, DCI Next Level, um, that's Daddy Crop Innovators. I'm part of that group. Uh, that's a pretty interesting way of thinking. Uh, holistic Management Training with Alan Savory. Ranching for profit, especially if you're in the cow-calf industry, I highly, highly recommend that one. That one plays on both sides, and that's mostly about business. Soil Health Academy, that's Gabe Brown School. No-till on the Plains Conference, that's down in Wichita. Um, but the big one is company product training. I don't think there's any better return on investment, dollar for time, than a $300 investment product training. You will learn way more than $300, and I don't care what you make, you can afford give me two days. I, I can tell you right now there's a quarter of farm ground that we own because of it. That I'm, I'm very confident in. Okay, so one last thing I'm gonna leave you with is the future of, the future is formed with small robotic tractors. If you're not one of the best people in your county, this should scare the holy crap out of you. <laughs> I, it excites me. Because I, I know I've got one of the best economic outlets on our farm. I know I'm making money every single year. And when that comes, and I can eliminate a lot of my headaches with more people, instead of trying to figure out, do I need to upgrade all the equipment? Do I need to get another big $500,000 tractor and planter combination? When one more quarter of ground, all I gotta think is, well, do I need to get one more $30,000 robot? I can run all day long, all the, way, all the time. I'm here to tell you, that excites me. And I will bid every ounce of margin out of that, out of that farm ground for a normal producer. If you're not great, and you're not leading, you won't be here. I, I, and I, I don't say that to scare people. I want it to be real. There's a lot of really cool opportunities on agriculture. And if you don't want to be ready to compete when this comes, you better start following the regenerative agriculture movement and figure out how you're going to sell direct to consumer. Because that's huge. My last slide is just win. Um, I don't know who listens to Tim Ferriss very often. He asks people all the time, if you had a billboard that could reach millions and millions of people every day, what would you put on it? And when I first heard that, I said, well, I use an explicit term, win, you know. It is a little effing win. And it just, it just seems true to me, okay? Everyone in this world can be winners. Most of you choose, most people choose not to be. And I think it's the effort, the constant work to be better and, and, and be a better farmer today is there. And I don't want to hear any excuses because every person on this planet can win. And I'll leave you with that. If anybody has any questions, you feel free to ask me, okay? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to wrap up here.
just real quick here with a couple of slides, and then we're going to go ahead and eat. And hey, hey, feel free. We'll have some chance to ask some questions. You got some, Justin? Uh, but let me just run through these real quick. First of all, people ask me all the time, they say, well, what's different about AgriVanda? They say, well, you know, there's a lot of companies that have really great products, and we have some unique products, some proprietary products. Intensify, uh, a number of our products are proprietary that nobody else really has them. Uh, but, you know, a lot of companies got great products. We don't have the corner on every single product. But I think the thing that I tell people is the, the premier uh, ag training. You know, Justin talked about Pro Ag 1, Pro Ag 2. <laughs> Uh, we have we have programs that field days that I really feel like are, are kind of the cutting edge of uh, some of the best education out there at a very very nominal cost. And then number three, what's happened because of these things and because of all the NCGA guys, we've got this network of people to give you answers. And I I, I was actually here at one of Preston's sale days, and I was in the sale barn. Uh, actually, no, it was it was for a meeting. It was, Actually, we were going to have a meeting out here in the sale barn, and uh, just as we were about to get started, I got uh, Bob Waldeman called me, and he says, "Hey, he says uh, Paul Schaffer called, and he has a guy that is from Alabama that called. Some of you guys know Paul; he's got Schaffer Manufacturing over here. He had a guy from Alabama call, wanted to know what from Conklin he should be using on his rice, and I thought, wow, <laughs> you're asking the wrong guy. I don't know much about rice." But I thought, you know, I, I think I know somebody who might. And so I texted two guys, and I had the phone numbers right there on my phone. I texted them. I said, hey, what should we be using on rice? Within 15 minutes, I got a text back. Told me exactly what we should be using. And it happened to come from Kip. And Kip happened to be in South America at the time. But the, the bottom line is, we got this network of people. Jerry Cox, the other day, Jerry was on the phone with one of our guys that had a bunch of questions about how he's been able to get up to 350 bushel corn. And so we've got this network of guys, especially with corn, soybeans, wheat, alfalfa, popcorn, and grain sorghum. You know, that's those are kind of the sweet spot. We've got formulas for any kind of crop you want to talk about. Pro Ag 1 was developed by Dennis Damon. Uh, but we've got a team of guys that does do that training, and here's the upcoming program. We have a DVD entitled Breaking the Three Bushel Corn Yield Barrier. If you're like me, I can't even find a DVD player in my house that works anymore. Everything we do is streaming. But if you want a, uh, a link to this video, it's a Jerry Cox showing how he's changed his operation to be able to increase his farm average yield to over 100 bushel. And uh, it's, a, it's a great program. Jerry's just fun to listen to. He's been out here before. But if you just give me a, a card or Make sure I got your email address. I'll just email you the link for that. But here's the upcoming ag programs if you want to jot down some of these dates. Kansas City will be January 21, 22. Uh, Wichita will be next closest here, you guys, 10th and 11th of February. And then in Lincoln, we'll be down there the 15th and 16th of February. So those are the upcoming Pro Ag ones. And if you've got a wholesale account set up with Conklin, this, attending this program gets you an additional 3% discount on the companion egg products and a nickel a gallon on the fertilizer. Uh, it's an educational discount that we offer. We've got a, a YouTube channel called 300bushelcorn.info. Uh, we've got a collection of about 80, 90 videos uh, of different guys from around the country, including Kip Cullors and Corey Overlander, who's been here before.